All right. Hello, and uh, welcome back to uh, to this week's vlog. We have Anderson here. Hello. Uh, we I, I'm thinking we got the microphones finally squared up, so you don't have to put your head through the computer to hear us. Uh, good. So um, I'm going to do most of the reading here, and Anderson's going to do the commentary because this is a lot of me's and eyes. So this week's vlog is entitled, or blog is entitled, Eeky Guy and the Velveteen Rabbit. Wow, that's uh, that's some work there. All right, so hello, and thank you for reading and listening along. So did I get a chance? Uh, so did you get a chance to look into the concept of Eeky Guy? I am reading a book, which I since finished entitled Ikigai Giving Everyday Meaning and Joy by Yukari Mitsuhashi. Yeah, Mitsuhashi. Interesting title. And, and you get the idea that one can give each and every day meaning and joy. So it's not figuring out what it is and it's one meaning and joy for the rest of your life. You can do this hourly, daily, weekly, and or maybe you do find one joy for the <laughs> and for the rest of your life and you, you ring it dry. That that would be fine. So not a bad idea. Yeah. Good. But here's the challenge. Beings, that's you and me, love problems. We create them simply to have something to do by solving them. I think with all the hot rotting, uh, with all the hot rotting your body podcasts, if you get what I'm saying, so you listen to this and take these, do this, and it'll make you this, and it'll make you that, and it'll get rid of this, and make you younger, and all the rest of this stuff. I, I call that hot rotting. So I think with all the hot rotting your body podcasts and all the metrics and electronics, one could be pushed into making his body a problem, and it really is. Uh, you'll see that with uh, advertising. So they put some some beautiful person up there and uh, um, they eat uh, banana puffs or something. And so you should too. And uh, hopefully you'll be as beautiful as this person is. So, eh, kind of kind of bad. I can assure you that this is not a good idea. That is to make your body a problem. Because boy, can it create some problems, and you can create some problems, too. Kind of create problems on its own, so you creating problems for it isn't really the direction you want to go. It's going to do it by itself, so just, just handle those problems as they come up. Don't make any more, right? Yeah, why help it? Yeah. You know, the, the, the end game is that you, you die horribly, <laughs> you know? And it's like, why, why help that process? And, and that's my attitude about it. Say. Okay, so yeah, we look at the metrics. So, okay, so the right arm is weaker than the left, or the left leg is smaller than the right. Yeah. And so, many years ago, I had this girlfriend who was giving me a hard time about having short legs. I guess I have short legs. Good. Everyone was laughing. Oh, oh, oh Dave's got, got short legs. Her dad came into the room and asked everybody what was so funny. They told him about my short legs, and he turned and looked at me, and he asked, do they reach the ground? Of course they did. So, they're long enough. And that's something to keep in mind. Regardless, they worked exactly how legs were supposed to work, whether they were short or long or this or that, or some guru said that this is the best way or that's the best way, or some Madison Avenue company hired a person that has the uh, the most beautiful legs in the world to show you how horrible yours are unless you buy product X. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Well, I, I had a, a training client um, a couple of weeks ago and I was doing a, a quad stretch, quads being the muscles on the front of the thighs there. Uh, I was doing a quad stretch rhythm and he was asking how far his heel was away from his butt. I said maybe five, six inches and he said, oh, that's, that's embarrassing. I should be much closer, right? I should be able to touch. And I kind of thought about it and I thought, well, it depends. If you want to be, let's say this guy's name was Bob. If you want to be Bob, no. Obviously, your lifestyle hasn't necessitated the need for full, you know, range of motion through that knee, a full flexible quad. So do you need to? No. If you want to be able to do a full squat and whatever else, then maybe, sure, you might want a, that full range of motion. But really, it's whatever you need to do. Do those legs reach the ground? They're doing what they need to do then. Perfect. 
sure i can't you know run 14 miles or, or run a mile in less than five minutes but they're adjusting people they're getting me from a to b it's doing what it needs to do yeah the body will do what it's trained to do yeah and think about that so if you sit all day there would be absolutely no reason why you should be able to touch your bottom with your heel yeah why you need to just be able to sit there and stare at a computer screen. That's your athleticism. So, and then and with that in mind, it's like, oh, but the research says, the research says, oh my goodness. I should you know, be able to. I should be able to. You should be able to. I mean, do you realize that in terms of the ideal swimmer, the research says that I have the perfect body. I have a long torso, short legs, just like Michael Phelps. There's only one problem. I mean, it's kind of a big problem. He can swim and I can't. And I can't. So much for the perfect swimmer's body. Here's a thought, and this is just something to keep in mind with all this electronics and gadgetry and all the rest of this stuff. Here's a thought. And how many would purchase this app for their phone? So they're going to implant a port into your forearm, right? And then one plugs their phone into it, and it tells them if they're having fun and enjoying this moment in time. It will tell them whether or not they are experiencing their ikigai. How many would find comfort in knowing this or consider it just another thing to be worried about? I think we would see people running around all wigged out because their app says they aren't enjoying themselves. Their ikigai is off. And if they only would apply themselves harder, work harder, they would be happier and align better with an artificial intelligence interpretation or idea of their ikigai. So some machine is going to tell you what your ikigai is based on logistics and metrics and everything else. And then you're going to sit and worry about it. Um, yeah. A little, you, little backwards there, yeah. right? If you want to worry about anything, it's, it's that you would have something implanted into your arm and, and pay any attention to your cell phone at all. There's something to worry about. It's something I was thinking about with my massage stuff. I, I was working on somebody just this past week thinking like, oh, I, I need to work on my, my massage intuition. You know, that's something I really respect. And a lot of massage therapists is they're able to just look at body, feel and go, ah, oh, I know exactly what and where and how. And, and uh, I kind of stopped myself because working on your intuition is a little oxymoronic, kind of like you got to <laughs> find your icky guy. You got to go out there and make it. And it's like, mm, just relax and it'll probably present itself to you. You'll, you'll kind of actually exhale and go, what do I want to do? What do I enjoy? Yeah. That's how it'll come to you. Yeah. That's... When you, when you go on your vision quest, all of a sudden your intuition is a, is yeah. a massage therapist it's... will present itself as an ego. It's yeah. Yeah. Something. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm expecting, but yeah. really if I just kind of let go and start looking and observing and letting my intuition flow, then it's probably going to work out. That'd be cool. Yeah. Good. So sit back for a moment and think about what you consider life and living this. Is this what you are doing? Yeah. Hmm. Think about it. Think about it. Okay. I only ask because it all comes back to lifestyle. Riddle me this, right? Do diseases and disorders make people sick? Or is it the lifestyle that led to such diseases and disorders as high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and all the rest of this stuff? Is it the lifestyle that led to these diseases that made you sick? So are you sick because of the diseases or were you unhealthy in the first place because of the lifestyle? Oh, there we go. Yeah, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, are you still unhealthy? If you're eating garbage and not getting outside and exercising and sleeping, yeah. Guarantee it. It's, it's the same question of did somebody, you know, did some divine being just zap you with some sort of sickness or did you do or not do something to put yourself in the position? I mean, it's just much more likely that you're active in your life. <laughs> yeah, and you, you actively pursue health or you actively pursue unhealth. If one does the research, it's lifestyle, sleep, nutrient-dense, whole foods, exercise, sunlight, and what could only be described as ikigai. And, and that's the path. That's, that's the way to help. 
So all the diagnostics, electronic metrics, guru podcasts, and all of the many other things that are available, and all of it comes right down to how a person lives, and more importantly, if they are digging it. It's a big one. Yeah. And nobody can actually answer that for you. You got to find out and introspect and go, do I like this? Am I enjoying myself? Yeah? Cool. Lean into it. Yeah. Here's a favorite quote of mine from The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams Bianco. So The Velveteen Rabbit is a nursery. Uh, 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 the Velveteen. Okay. So The Velveteen Rabbit is in the nursery talking to a toy horse about becoming real and how much he, the Velveteen Rabbit, would love to be a real rabbit. So he asks the, the horse, and he says, uh, the horse says, real isn't how you are made, said the skin horse. That's what the rabbit was, or that's what the horse was called. It's a thing that happens to you when a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up? he asked, or bit by bit. It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or, ha or who have to be carefully kept. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. I've been love. <laughs> I'm real. But these things, these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. And that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So all this plastic stuff and being fixed and being made unreal and all the rest of the stuff, you know, if you lived, you've got some some marks for it. I, I always sort of laugh with people. You know, if I look at somebody's X-ray or MRI and they're 50, 60 years old and, and the spine looks brand new, I kind of feel sorry for them because they never lived. You know, when the, when the Grim Reaper comes and grabs the body, you know, and you say, hey, take care of that body. I, I took real good care of it. He's going to throw it into the same bone pile with all the people that came in with their head in a basket, a crutch under one arm, and intestines squirting out of them, and all the rest of the stuff. But I really, really like that, you know? That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily, or have sharp edges, or who have to be carefully kept. Mm -hmm. If right. you're rigid and just made of, you know, that, that steel or glass or something, it's not, you don't really fit into much. This real world needs a lot of uh, adaptability. And if you're that, you know, you're not going to work too well in a lot of situations. Yeah. Once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. Well, I think that says it all, really. Um, one sees that it is only love that makes a person real, not a body, regardless of what pro electronic devices are telling you. I go blast from fast, warning, warning, Will Robinson. If you remember the old Lost in Space. Um, yeah, that's all the electronic gadgets are. They just always tell you what's wrong all the time. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And you introvert on that and you go through life and you spend your whole life looking at the world trying to figure out what's wrong. And there's absolutely nothing wrong except you got that stupid phone and you're letting it mm -hmm. tell you everything's wrong. I've heard that enough times from people who have the, the Fitbits and the whatever else is they, they wake up and they feel pretty dang good and then their watch tells them they had a horrible night's sleep. And that's the day. That's they're it. destroyed. Yeah. Ruined day, absolutely. Even though they were feeling pretty good and they probably would have had just a fine day. It's just, yeah. you know, sometimes you let good enough alone and you just let yourself kind of feel good. It's not a bad thing. Right. But the watch said no. 
Yeah. So it, it is one's lifestyle, the meaningfulness of one's actions on a daily basis, and the love one imbues the world around him with that makes a person real. In other words, ikigai. In case you didn't see the last one, ikigai is a Japanese term for the action that you put into your life to kind of make your dreams come true. And it's spelled I-K-I-G-A-I. I should have said that earlier. All right. Well, as you know, we tend to overestimate what we can achieve in a day and underestimate what we might accomplish in a lifetime. The little things go the furthest and will add up to a life well led. Or lived. That would be better. All right. Anything more comments to make? I think I got it. I said it all, yeah. Good. Okay, well, thank you for following along, and I appreciate if you'd hit the like button, and uh, if you have some comments, um, or you want to know about Ikigai or the Velveteen Rabbit or, or anything else, um, I will make a comment. I, I know that these don't seem like your typical health blogs and vlogs, and um, again, I, I've, I've been at this almost 40 years, and this idea of chasing diseases and taking care of bodies and doing this for a body and that for a body. I've never met a 500 year old man. But that life energy, that soul, that spirit, that thing that is you is trillions of years old and it is immortal. Why would you spend your time working on these bodies when you are, are actually so much more? Um, I know that's not what you want to hear your chiropractor say because, you know, if you need help with your body, come on in, we'll take care of it. But that's what these blogs are, are meant to do. And I know they're not really chiropractic and everybody wants to know how many push-ups and what vitamins and stuff like that. But when you step back, there is this thing that is you and uh, that's the solution to the problem because it is the problem and it is the solution. That's all we're trying to say is that, you know, whatever body problem you have, it, it stemmed from lifestyle, which stemmed from your purpose for being here. So right. if you can handle that source there, it sounds big and heavy and it kind of is, but not if you just, again, That's exhale. That's a great, great way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it really is. Um, yeah. These diseases are a, an end product of many, many years of Poor lifestyle choices. Yeah, not the best way to put it. Yeah, not doing exactly what fuels you, what 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 imbues you with life. So uh, and that's, you know. that's that's even finding happiness. It's not about well, I probably should have eaten more carrots. Why? Why? You probably should have lived more. Yeah. You probably should have had more fun. You probably should have told uh, more people where to get off. That's yeah. a nice way yeah. to put it. And uh, stuff like that. That's all I was going to say with the push-ups. If if you know if it's zero push-ups that you know fuels you, do zero. If it's one hundred and fifty thousand, like David Goggins, I guess you got to do one hundred and fifty thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand. So get going on it, man. Have fun. Yeah, like Mark Twain said, the older he gets, he, he tended to regret less and less what he did, but more and more the things that he never did. Mm -hmm. So get doing. Get going, man. Yeah. So my dad used to tell me all the time. <laughs> shot in the back of the head. Get going. <laughs> All right. We'll be nicer than that. Yeah, no shot in the back of the head. All right. Well, thank you for following along. Adios. See you guys. Take care.